Good evening. Today's Bible study is called The Greater Plan. It comes from the Pathway Sunday School Lesson Book for December 29th. The devotional reading is from Psalm 89, 19 through 37. The background scripture and the printed passage are the same. They come from 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 16 through 27, and reads as follows. The, then King David went and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, Lord God, and what is my family, that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant. Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. There is no one like you, Lord, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for yourself and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt, you made your people, Israel, your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord, let the promise you have made concerning your servant in this house be established forever. Do as you promised, so that it will be established and that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, the Lord Almighty, the God over Israel, is Israel's God. And the house of your servant, David, will, established, will be established before you. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. You, Lord, our God, you have promised these good things to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Lord, have blessed it, and it will be blessed forever. Amen. Now let's get to the breaking down. We start off in First Chronicles, and we see that King David went and sat down in front of the Lord. What he when did is he sat down before the Lord, and David simply went to pray, because this is about a prayer. David was thanking the Lord for finding favor with him to build the house through him and his sons and generations to come. If you read um, First Chronicles seventeen, eleven through thirteen, it says. When your days are over and you go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build the house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him, as I took it away from your predecessor. Uh-oh. So this was all spoken through. Nathan to David and David was thanking the Lord there were numerous reasons to be thankful if you look at it the Lord has a covenant of love with David and is going to be with David's lineage that's in Psalm 89 28 and 33 um, two God shows his punishment and his mercies and that's Psalm 89 30 through 33 God tells how long he will be with David's lineage that's Psalm 89, verse 29 and 36 through 37. And then the Lord will not violate his covenant and swears it by his holiness. That's Psalm 89, 34 through 35. This is not a lie to David, and David has a reason to pray and praise the Lord. David had a plan to build a house for the Lord, but the Lord's plan sounds better than David's. And it has so many blessings in it. And David's lineage still builds a house for the Lord. Solomon built God a magnificent house. So when he says, who am I? David is not speaking about him being any greater or better than someone else. He is describing how great God is to look at him and bless him like that. If you read Psalm 138 and 6, it says, Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. And then in verse 17, it says, As if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. 
You, Lord God, have looked at me as though I were most exalted of men. David thanks the Lord for speaking of his house slash lineage. And David realizes that he is nobody special because he calls himself a servant. So he knows he's nothing special. David's attitude wasn't, I am so great that even God gives me gifts. His attitude was, God is so great that he even gives me gifts. The master does as he wishes, and David knows this, but he has found favor on this servant. This also shows you that David accepted no when the Lord said, you won't build the house. David was being obedient and humble. If you look at Jeremiah 7 and 23, it says, but I gave them this command, obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you that it may go well with you. David was being obedient and humble and God's giving reflects the greatness of the giver, not the receiver. It reflects on God's greatness, not David's gift, but the fact that God gave and gives much. In verse 18, it says, What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant. Just to get the point of the word servant, which David keeps reiterating through this, it was because David was so humble to have the Lord giving him so a mighty gift as if he was important or an important man born for much. The Lord was just that great. Verse 19 says, Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. David, he acknowledges that all things must be done according to the Lord's will. And the Lord's will was to bless David and his family if they do as he commands. David is amazed in his prayer. You look at Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord is speaking here. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And that's what he's given to David here. There is no one like you, Lord, and there is no God but you. As we have heard with our own ears, this is verse 20. David gives a heavy praise when he states that there is no one like you. They had been through battles. They knew others believed in other gods with a lowercase g. But David says they are not you, Father. Then David acknowledges that he has and Israel had heard it with their own ears. Nathan was the one bringing the message now, but the Lord had so many prior to Nathan that the word was always there. And now they were listening. Even when they moved the ark, they finally listened, and they did as they were told. That had to make sure they that had to make sure that they were listening to the Lord and not man, because even Nathan, remember Nathan got beside himself. You read First Chronicles two seventeen two through four. It says Nathan replied to David, "Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you." But that night, the word of God came to Nathan saying, uh-oh, he had to be corrected. Verse 4 says, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. So you can always have to be, always listen to the Lord, and you will know his will and humble yourself, and you will do his will. Verse 21 says, and who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for yourself and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from before your people whom you redeemed from Egypt. David knows how the Lord loves Israel and he acknowledges God's goodness to Israel. This verse is not about the people of Israel because it speaks to all of God's actions. It speaks to God's love. It speaks to God's provision for these people. He speaks to God redeeming a people. If you look at Isaiah 44 and 22, it says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. 
God has been at work all the time in regards to redemption. It speaks to all of the wonders that he has done, so they know the goodness of God and that he is a provider. First Chronicles 16 and 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. If God did no other great works, none, his love is what we need then when David speaks to the Lord being a protector because he drove out nations, if you read 2 Samuel 22, 3 and through 4, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior. From violent people you save me. I call the Lord who is worthy of praise and have been saved from my enemies. Verse 22 says, you made your people Israel your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. David states that he is just thankful for what the Lord has done for wanting to be God to Israel and to be there forever. Verse 23 and 24, and now, Lord, let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. Do out your, as you promised so that it will be established and that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, The Lord Almighty, the God over Israel, is Israel's God. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. David is asking in his prayer that the Lord does what he stated in his promise. And he's using the word. I have to let you know that this was a, a bold prayer by David because he trusted God to do what he said. This wasn't arrogance. David was telling him David is approaching the throne with confidence. David is claiming and doing this prayer with faith and claiming that which was promised to him. We all should be as confident as David is in this prayer. And we should use the divine word when we go to God. God has told us what he has played us for and what he wants to give us and do for us. Do we go to the Lord and ask him according to his word? Verse 25 says, you, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. If you look at Philippians 1, 4 through 6, it says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this. That he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Mm. Verse 26 says, you, Lord, are God. You have promised these good things to your servant. David is still praying from his heart, and he knows the promise that the Lord has made to him. And again, David acknowledges that he is a servant, but the master never lies. And he is waiting, and I want to say anxiously waiting, but thoroughly, he is thoroughly thankful to the Lord. David knew that God is the only God and that the Lord can't lie. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not human, that he should lie. He is not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise? and not fulfill. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever in your sight for you Lord have blessed it and it will be blessed forever. This is verse 27. And David just lifts the Lord up for the promises to him and the future that goes with these promises because as we stated earlier that the blessing is forever. It is also a show of the first hereditary monarchy. Because no king had ever been succeeded by his son in Israel. David was the first. God had a greater plan for this shepherd king, and this was a blessing in its own right. God had a greater plan, and we all benefited from it. And David understood this in his prayer. Amen.